Most people think that only people with diabetes get nerve damage. After all, isn't that why they call it diabetic nerve damage? Well, think again. Although 60% of diabetics will develop a type of nerve damage called peripheral neuropathy, where they can experience symptoms like numbness, tingling, burning, pins and needles, lightning bolt pain, loss of balance, and other symptoms, there are many, many other things that can lead to this type of nerve damage. In fact, the question most commonly asked is, I don't know how I got peripheral neuropathy. I'm not diabetic. How did I get this? Well, stay with me because I'll cover all of that and make it crystal clear to you for you to understand how you got your peripheral neuropathy. Coming up. Hey gang, if you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell so that you can get notified when I publish new content. Now, let's dive in. 24 million Americans currently suffer from peripheral neuropathy, but when you look at the breakdown, only one-third of all neuropathy sufferers will have diabetes. That's only eight out of 24 million people. So when you look at the grand scheme of things, 16 million people develop peripheral neuropathy from something else other than diabetes. 16 million, wow. Well, let's take a look at what other things can cause peripheral neuropathy. Chemotherapy is a large cause of nerve damage. In fact, that's how my mother developed her neuropathy. The fact is that 90% of patients being treated with platinum-based chemotherapies like cisplatin, carboplatin, and oxaliplatin will develop peripheral neuropathy. Now, this next one is probably gonna come as a shocker to you. Did you know that cholesterol-lowering drugs known as statins are a huge culprit when it comes to causing peripheral nerve damage? As a matter of fact, in 2012, the FDA mandated a black box warning for all statin drugs because of the adverse effects and damage that they cause to peripheral nerves. But that wasn't the only reason. It turns out that statins can also cause the nerves in the brain to result in memory loss, amnesia, and confusion. By the way, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term black box warning, this is the most severe warning the FDA will assign to any drug that runs a high hazard with taking the medication. However, statins aren't the only medication that pose a risk to the health and the function of your nerves. Certain antihypertensives, also known as blood pressure medications, can cause significant damage to peripheral nerves, especially the family of drugs that fall under the calcium channel blockers. These are drugs like amlodipine, Nicardipine, any drug that ends in P-I-N-E, peen, is a generic form of a calcium channel blocker. A few of the brand names are Norvasc, Deltiazem, Cardizem, Verapamil, and Procardia, but there are many others. If you're not sure if you're on a calcium channel blocker for your medication, you can go to drugs.com and type in the name of your med. It gives you great information as to what the medication treats, the family that it's in, like calcium channel blockers, and also the side effects associated with it. This website is a great tool to use. Now, we're still not done with the most dangerous meds for your nerves. There are a group of antibiotics that are widely used that are known to cause extremely severe and extensive damage to the peripheral nerves. These are fluoroquinolone antibiotics, and they go by the names Levaquin or Levofloxacin, Cipro or Ciprofloxacin, Avalox or Moxifloxacin. Any antibiotic that ends in floxacin is part of the fluoroquinolone family and should be avoided. It may shock you that the FDA has issued four black box warnings against the entire family of antibiotics and has stated that they should only be used for life-threatening conditions. In spite of these warnings by the FDA, doctors are still prescribing them for conditions non-life-threatening like urinary tract infections, sinus infections, prostatitis, 
and bronchitis. And they're even used on our pets, especially for UTIs. Moxifloxacin is commonly prescribed for pets, uh, and it's just as dangerous and has the same serious side effects for them as it does for us. These are just a few of the many medications that can either cause or worsen your nerve damage. If you'd like to see a more comprehensive list of medications associated with causing peripheral neuropathy, I'll leave a link for you below in the description box. Moving on to other causes. Chronic alcohol consumption can lead to peripheral neuropathy. I'm not going to go into great detail with this because I did an entire video on it, so make sure you catch my video on peripheral neuropathy and alcohol consumption. I go over how much is too much, how much is a safe amount, but statistics show that consuming more than two alcoholic beverages per night, every night, for over a year can result in peripheral nerve damage. And yes, this does include beer and wine. I get asked this question all the time. Now, let me review some chronic diseases that can cause peripheral neuropathy. Autoimmune diseases can certainly lead to nerve damage. So autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, and celiac disease. Also, any arterial disease and vascular problems that decrease the oxygen supply to the peripheral nerves will lead to damage. And these can be conditions like COPD, coronary artery disease, or coronary microvascular disease, venous insufficiency like varicose veins, and peripheral artery disease, and it's known as PAD for short. Also, Kidney disease or liver disease has been linked with causing peripheral nerve damage, as well as hypothyroidism. Now, infections like shingles, Lyme disease, and HIV can also cause nerve damage. Now, these next conditions that I'm going to share with you will probably take you by surprise. Would you have ever guessed that chronic malnutrition can lead to peripheral neuropathy? In fact, I treated a beautiful young lady in her early 20s who had severe neuropathy because she suffered from anorexia nervosa. Now, you might find this next one equally as startling. People who undergo bariatric surgery are at a huge risk for developing peripheral neuropathy. And the reason is because they become severely nutrient depleted because they can only initially hold two to three ounces of food or fluid in their stomach or in the sleeve that's been formed at a time. Even later with healing, they can only hold up to 10 to 15 ounces with each meal, whereas a normal healthy stomach can hold up to three pounds. So yes, these people will lose an enormous amount of weight, but they also tend to become severely malnourished and nutrient deficient or depleted. By now, we've all heard the term gluten sensitivity. But did you know that when you're gluten sensitive, this can lead to peripheral nerve damage because of the excess inflammation that's created? Also, chronic acid reflux or GERD can also lead to peripheral nerve damage. And the biggest reason is more so because of the medications that people use to decrease their acid production. These medications are called proton pump inhibitors, and they go by names of Nexium, Prilosect, and they can cause significant damage to the nerves. Next, I'm going to talk to you about chemical toxins and the damaging effects they can have on peripheral nerves. So, how do we get exposed to these toxins? Well, one way is by being exposed to barium dyes that are used in common medical studies like barium swallow x-rays, endoscopy, and colonoscopy. The barium in these can all lead to severe nerve damage, not to mention kidney damage as well. Also, gandolinium dye used in contrast studies like CT scans or MRI scans can lead to nerve damage. Now, even if you haven't had any of these medical procedures, it doesn't mean you're safe because indoor or outdoor pesticides can lead to nerve damage as well as exposure to VOCs and heavy metals. These can all cause significant nerve damage. I'm going to go into this topic deeper in one of my upcoming videos within the next few weeks. So make sure you subscribe and click on the bell to get notified when I post new content because I don't want you to miss it. Lastly, physical injuries and surgical procedures can result in peripheral nerve damage. I do want to point out with surgical procedures, it's not necessarily that something went wrong with the surgery. 
More often than not, a person develops peripheral neuropathy after their surgery because of the position they were placed in for long periods of time. This can cause an abnormal stretch on the nerves or abnormal pressure on the nerves, which can lead to damage. So by now, it should be clear that diabetics aren't the only people who develop peripheral neuropathy. For more information about how you can repair your peripheral nerve damage, check out my video on Nerves Can Heal. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful, and I hope it started you back on your journey to great nerve health. Blessings.